Well, hello, here we are again, as you can see, with the punch bag here in my luxury training. I thought about thought about getting a big Chinese calligraphy thing behind me, but it is what it is. So I want to move on today and look at, we've looked lots of various punches on the bag, and I want to look at combining, just thinking about combining, let's say start with jab and cross. There's a few things around that that are going to be really useful. It's going to really open up our understanding of complementary routing and it's going to help us just move forward a little bit in terms of understanding dynamic dynamic structural movement and getting beyond thinking about it as just singular postures so we're going to do it in exactly the same way that we've done before that we've looked at just hitting in a testing structure manner and this I assure you this is the way to do it. So I know that everyone, once you start getting a bit of a feel for it and you want to start hitting the bag with power, this is the way to do it step by step, just building the structural consistency and linking it in, interlinking it and understand why it's linked in with Zhang Zhuang and the feelings that you get in Zhang Zhuang and this overall fit feeling of the body knitting together as, as an overall system and you know emphasize again and again and again Zhang Zhuang does multiple different things so if I emphasize one thing it doesn't mean that I'm ignoring the other things it does things right down like on a micro level that you can feel things happening like um I, I suppose the thing the thing people talk about is this idea of your pause breathing which is which is an idiom you know it's, a, it's an idiom from Chinese medicine what means well, very much like you know when you get that kind of feeling of goosebumps and the feeling all the hair stand up all over your body and it just feels like but you get that feeling all over your body and um, so you know it's doing things in like micro micro levels and then it's also doing things in big levels like the whole body integrating into a into a solid system and this sense of being rounded we've talked about truncated movement this embrace concept which we can look at again the importance of so so in 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 mandarin embrace is like bao the word is bao b-a-o it's usually usually translated as in in um, in roman characters bao the idea of embrace and that's a really interesting and deep concept and when we come to look at the the natural set and we understand how much is just based around the simplicity of this idea that the body forms this kind of embracing posture and how much force is stored in that and how we use that as an integrated system. So Zhang Zhuang really helping us to develop this to a much higher integrated systemic level and then bringing it into the way that we create our dynamic movements, our configurations, dynamic configurations and the way that they are stacked, i.e. specifically constructed maintaining this overall that we've looked at from multiple different angles, this overall bow kind of concept of being rounded and embracing and we've looked at the idea of truncated movement and linking it in together with the overall structural integration of dynamic postures and combinations so that's i don't want to do too much talking today so we're going to do just like just like we did before with the testing structure to maintain that, to maintain that body consistency. We don't want to lose it by just starting to hit the bag really, really hard. This is the way to do it, step by step, and then just build and build and build into the power. Be patient with the training, work on your standing, work on your slow movement, work on your relaxed but structurally correct postural alignment. All the kind of things you used to see when you see people move with that kind of each characteristic each one body movement and then bringing it into the testing structure phase so it's going to help us as we combine jab and cross cross and jab it's going to help us understand a little bit more about complementary routing and it's also just going to help us test a little bit more about how we dynamically use these structural principles that we've that we've been developing and i think the most important thing to emphasize is to see the scientific and physiological development from one stage into the next and you want to get past this kind of standing gives you magical powers or something or people talking about standing and then when you say where is the practical application they say oh go and look at my tyson it's like who 
does, does, did Mike Tyson do standing? I don't, I don't think so. So here, here we can see in this, you know, the correct method, we can see the way that there's a physiological and scientific link between the training method and leading right the way through all up to at, at, at least, at least in terms of being able to put the gloves on and do some sparring using the actual principles that, that we're teaching, that we're learning. So that's the, the state, this, the stage that we want to get to at this point. So we're going to begin just as before with our our usual posture. And we're going to go from jab, very relaxed like that, remembering all of our principles. So all of our principles. So hitting at the, the head point and hit and stop there. And then we, what we want to do is then drop and roll into the cross like that. And that's where we want to take it up to. We want to be that level of relaxation. There's a lot to learn from hitting the bag, as I've said before. But remember, there's a lot to learn from hitting at, at every power level, including low power levels. And that's the kind of training you don't often see. By doing it like that, we maintain our structural integrity. So that step by step, we hit it harder and harder. The structural integrity remains. All the rules of each one remain in the way that we the way that we move, and then we can hit hit with proper power. So, but for now, one hit and stop, two hit and stop, and then down. And I noticed from editing the videos, you can really see the way that my my hand twists in. This very characteristic kind of unusual each one fist method. You can see that I actually hit the bag like that. You know, it's not just it's not just theory. So let's do a few. We want to hold it like this and then change. And then pull straight back like that. One. See that I'm I'm up, I'm up, and then it drops and then flows into the into the cross. One, up, down, and then flow into the cross. So, one, rise, and then it just drops, changes into the, into the cross. Like this. So, just rise, one, we're rising up, so pushing up on the pivot root. This is something we very often don't hear about. Well, we'll talk, we hear people talk about setting up, setting up like one, it sets you up for this movement, but really thinking about the, the complementary routing and this idea as a concept, how it functions. So that from here, one, we're open, and then as the pivot route goes down and we change, we drop, we down, we sink, sink and rise into the next one. So classic washu concepts. And this is really, when I say up, down, open, close, the four contexts of how we form postures, that can be very confusing. I know really, I, I translated it that way because it's the easiest translation, but it should be like rising, sinking, open, close. And when you say it like that, you realize these aren't directions their forms of postural movement, postural context that determine how we can stack a configuration. That leads to a lot of confusion with people who, they don't really get it conceptually, so they, they, they think about it as directions, so they confuse it with Hun Yuan Li, because Hun Yuan Li is about directions, or feelings of direction anyway, feelings. So a lot of people confuse Hun Yuan Li, because Hun, Hun Yuan Li, you can feel, I talked about this idea of radiating, and people confuse it as the whole body system moving like that. I think it's just that, that every part of the body is going in different directions. Actually, you can feel Hun Yuan Li in just one limb or part of your limb. You can feel it in just part, this part of your arm. Just by firing the, the cells or nerves all around, you can feel like this kind of radiating. I've talked about it before and I'll talk about it again. It's not. I thought I was having a spiritual experience when it happened, but it's just a perfectly normal physiological thing at the end of the day. And when we link all of that together over the whole body, 
creates like this neural map that the intent can then use to create a very sophisticated movement paradigm that links together every part of the whole body. That's directions. That involves directions like up, down, side and side, forwards and backwards. And remember, I've always said like up, down, open, close. They're not. There's, there's no forwards and backwards because they're not directions. They're context. So if we, ch if we change it to rise, sink, open, close, open, close, rise, sink, then you can see that they're not directions. So that's maybe I could have used less confusing language, but unfortunately, I don't, th don't think it's anything to do with me. But I see people saying like, well, you know, Hun Yuan Lee involves rising and it evolves down, you know, it's like, no, those aren't, that's not Hun Yuan Lee, that's not, Hun Yuan Lee is directional, but the, the four contexts that determine how we stack a configuration, they're not directions, they're ways that the body moves, open, close, rise, sink, those are the four contexts, four treasures that we use to determine how we how we stack a configuration how how we dynamically animate it so again so see we rise as we open and those those four contexts very often overlap i mean it's the art of each one and we'll look at it later how you bring those four contexts together in more complex compound movements but one sink sink and then Rise into the next. Again, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And just by doing it like that, you get so much really good feedback about the structural movement and your ability to flow from one to the next. Let's do it the other way. We're breaking it down like this at this point, this hit and stop, because we really want to feel this movement into the into the cross. One. I want to feel we're getting the sink and rise up into that. One. And what's this doing? It's creating more space. That just that movement of sinking and rising creates more space in the posture. It makes a bigger posture. So this is a key concept as we move forwards that. We throw away all the mystical nonsense and find the, the the really interesting mystery within the the reality of the scientific movement that we're trying to create more volume in every posture to create more more power. So same thing as we've looked at this. You know, what's the secret of this kind of movement? What's the secret? Why do people do this? Well, one of the reasons is it creates more movement. It teaches you about spiral force, creates more volume in the posture. Once you understand this, it just it reveals so much about each one. And you know, there's lots of people who are like, "Well, this is just the way. This is just the way it should be done, and everything else is wrong." The way you know someone who really understands each one is they can look at all those other ways of doing that, doing things, and they don't just say that's wrong. They can analyze them and take them apart and say why they're doing them in the way that they're doing so. One, drop, drop, change. So everything's creating more movement. Spiral, um, spiral. Screwing force, screwing force is creating more movement. One, even though lifting up on the pivot roots, creating more movement. One, and then two, creating more movement. Two. by breaking it down like this you can really get a feel for the movement when you start doing it faster it's too fast to see it's too fast to even feel that you're doing it so and, and when you look at it someone doing it fast it's too fast to even see so 
it's another good reason for breaking it down like this but most of all we want that feedback from the bag just pushing into the posture remember understanding that as we use Hun Yuan Li in a more complex way over the whole body that it needs to cope with feedback from actually hitting something that's Again, it's so obvious, but who do you ever hear talk about that? That I'm actually going to hit something, sort of. The way that your body is structured together with its springy force, its springiness, which really is just an artifact of the bringing the right amount of tensional consistency into the body. That's also got to receive force or cope with force when you hit something. Wang Sheng Chai talks about this specifically in terms of attack and defence, that it's got to receive force, including when you hit something and you get force back in the body. So we need that. We need to build up our just like intuitive ability to do that and to receive the force and not be thrown off our posture. So one, two, and okay, again, one more time. One, two like that next of course we want to do it the other way so i mean there's no, there's no set way of doing it really there's no set you can design a curriculum if you want but there's no set way of doing it there's, there's different things that we need to learn but this this to me is the most sensible next step so we go one from the cross and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to drop drop and then rise rise again into the jab so one hit and stop and then into the cross into the jab and you can see that we don't necessarily we don't want to go like drop the guard into the the jab or even into the the cross like we do it with that but one and we just adjust the the hand height so that we keep the hands so that you know you keep the hands in the same pretty much position it's all done with the so again it's a complex thing that the intent is having to calculate one two it's all done in the articulation of the body one two into the next posture like that again it's something you can check by you can check it by filming yourself as well doing this so Something else this is really good for is your range and understanding the range, i.e. how far you are away from the target. So one, if I lean, if I really lean back too far, I'll miss, I'll miss the target. You can do it deliberately like this. When someone comes in closer, you can change and lean right over like that. But getting the exact range right so that you've still got a curvature in the arm. like that so you can practice that you can practice both ways I've done both ways so like that I can't remember you can practice that however many times you feel is is necessary for you but don't overdo it remember to recognize when you're at the 95 percent point and move on otherwise you're just wasting time don't fetishize volume just don't fetishize doing things for thousands and thousands of times. I keep seeing people saying this stuff about practicing basics for, you know, just continuously practice basics forever. That's why they're stuck at the level of basics. Always remember that. You want to be great. You want to be awesome, you know, so keep escalating what we mean by a basic. Next, there's a couple of, there's a couple of things that we could do. So, doesn't really matter which one which one we practice so we could take it up into three punches 
or we could take it up into one two let's take let's take it up into three punches like this first because that seems the easiest one hit and stop two three Very old school kind of each one practice doing things in threes. Things to remember is not to overemphasize the last one. I've talked about that before. That's very often see that in each one, the last one is emphasized. It's like it's positive and negative. When you hit him with full power, what you don't want to do, like, like you very often see this, that for a lot of people, the last one is less powerful. I mean, like non each one. I mean, you hardly ever see any each one people hitting the bag with power. I mean, if any, like, answers on a postcard please but when you see other people hitting the bag very often the last one they just like the, the last jab or something like that they just throw out and it's really light and we don't want that we want it to be powerful so but we want them all to be powerful at first later on we start thinking about ratios and i'm going to talk about that much more across across all the the upcoming videos ratios of choosing which ones faster which one's more powerful and you do have to well, i'm going to have to look at that in a moment so but for now think about them all all equal one two three this is very good also for just checking for any excess body movement we don't want any excess body movement and there always will be when you when you start to hit with more power there'll be things like the arm will come up like that when you when you hit because the power's got to go somewhere if it can't all go into the target then it'll come back into your body and you'll do things like that it's the kind of thing you'll see all the time most people no matter how they good they'll have a little bit of that because there's so much power being generated it can't it just it can't all go into the target necessarily so it's got to go somewhere that's why we need the correct the correct consistency to absorb it. Come on. So we can change how long we wait between each punch. We can speed it up a little bit. As long as we're still just doing hit and stop, be clear on what it is that you're practicing. So next, instead of hit and stop, we use one, two. We use our, our, our somatic time and our muscle bounce around the, around the shoulders. And this teaches us lots of interesting things. It makes our posture more compound so that two things become one. It also teaches us about compromise in terms of, of power and speed. So if I want to one, usually the speed we want is the speed that the the muscles relax back off the bag one, two, like that, into the into the posture rather than hitting full power letting all the muscles fly forward and we lose that bounce back off the off the muscles we want that one two that's going to time us into the next posture when we're doing it a little bit slower like this the, the muscle bounce isn't quite the same as when we do it with full power but not to worry about that for the moment, we just worry about the, the posture itself. So I'm gonna go and hit and stop on the last one. Changing the way. Remember, be really strict with yourself about being ambidextrous as well assuming that you can mean each one should adapt to anyone no matter what physiological difficulties you're you're facing you know even if you're even if you're paralyzed and you can still use your mind you can still use visualization even if you're in a wheelchair you've got to adapt to what it is that, that that's your physiology but for like like a standard human body let's put it that way that is able to do this be really strict and make sure that you you consistently practice ambidextrous both sides so.
course, if you've been practicing this, you'll notice as well. It's also toughening your your hands up and your knuckles, wrist strength for the for the, the screen force, all those things. So doing it like that it begins to really test your ability to use your to use your posture in a more dynamic more dynamic way, but with a target. So when you when you're hitting on the air, it doesn't matter. Cross is longer than the the jab or whatever. One, two, three, here you suddenly realise actually it's a lot shorter and then you start understanding things like one, two, like one, how we don't usually want to lean in. We can do if we're doing it as a variation. We stack it and skew it forward like that for a longer for a longer cross, but our normal standard off the spot, one, two, see, one, two, one, see, I don't lean forwards with it. Now you see why when the target is static like that. One, to it just makes the distance perfect for for a posture like that of course we can we can always we can always um, if we further out change it into a longer we can stack stack the configuration differently skew it forward and do a longer posture then the same thing for crossing a into jab so, Too, too much pre-movement there. That's I, I like my intent led with my hand. My intent was in my hand rather than in the core body movement. So, one the most useful thing that we can be learning here is this lead from the. As I said before, you know, you can see when someone leads from the hand, the hand goes first, and you can see when they lead from the from the far lead from the far lead movement that it's in the body. And again, this is when, when people start talking about things like power comes from the floor, which I've criticised multiple times, that idea. Yeah, not in each one, like in lots of other things, yes, yes it does. And if you lead from the hand, lead from the hand and push in from the floor, you can say power comes from the push. But if you lead from the, the movement around the axis, then power comes from that. And that just sets the posture, just like it does in Shingi Chuan when you... The back foot just sets the posture, i.e. stabilises it and makes it solid at a point of impact. It doesn't actually add power in as such. It's, it, it helps the... Like, the power has to be directed to a certain point. So, as I've talked about before, if there's loose parts in the body, it gets, the power gets dissipated. So, when you set a posture, it helps the power be directed to a, to a specific point. That's not very clear, I know. I've got another video on it, so I explain it very much more clearly. Then. But the point being to lead from the... Left. Even if even if you're doing it quite light, quite light like this. Wow. You keep your, hand, keep your hand a little bit loose. It's very much like sparring for this kind of thing. Just keep your hand a little bit looser. Like when you're sparring, you shouldn't have a full. I mean, it's exactly the same principle as that I'm talking about when the configuration's got solidified to transmit force. If you if you make a fist when you're sparring, you hit much harder. But if you keep it like like you're holding an egg, it just dissipates all the force, so it's not transmitted into the opponent. And that is one of the things that really teaches you about the transmission of force. You start doing it like this. Hey, old trash. I thought he wasn't going to make an appearance. Hey, what's up? What's up, eh? So do it the other way and watch for the... I don't lead with my hand, I lead with my... the far lead around the virtual reality axis. So I'm doing a bit sharper now, obviously. Just bringing up the sharpness, which by now, if we've done the other bag work videos, that should be absolutely fine. Should be able to do that. If not, if not, just take it down. Take it down a level. Work on the level that you need to work at to get up to the ninety-five percent point. But even if we take it down a level, still focus on the thing that moves is the the the, the parts of the body on the side to make it go around the 
rotational axis like that. Super light, super light. When you see people training like that, you can't hit someone like that and expect them to be knocked out. You can't. So people have appointed fantasy expectations about this kind of training that you always see in each one. You can't knock someone out like that. You need real power, real kinetic force. It's not like some magic thing happened. See some buffoons on the internet. It's all one talking about. Saying like, when when Yao Chen Guang hits you like this, he'll burst your internal organs and like, that's just not true. It's just nonsense. So don't appoint those expectations. We bring it up into real power, step by step from this. So let's take it into our, our three punches now. Right? You start seeing lots of different things happening now that, that weren't happening when we were doing it on the air and it's why it's so important to do this kind of training. So for example, you can see I'm having to adapt the, the length of the punches. Some are longer than others, just depends where the target is. I'm having to do that on the fly in a moment. And you can see that the pivot roots now go much smaller when you start doing this than when you do them on their own. If you do a single punch, for power, you do all kinds of things, like I leaned over then to create more power and movement, pivot root comes up higher. When you combine, you've got to start making compromises to compound the movement, making the pivot root much smaller is one of the key compound compromises that we have to do. And it also takes power away, so if we're going to go boom, 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 we can maximise power with everything, but when we want to use our somatic timing to, to complete a combination we've got to make compromises between the the power of the punches and the speed there's no other way so we can get it clearly we can get it much more powerful and faster than this but this is how we we begin to train it the other way Like that, and we can bring it up, we can make it faster, making it faster like that, but not putting the power in. So we can do it faster and still maintain this idea that we're testing structure, that we're getting the feedback in the body. It depends on your level, how much you want to do. Do it slower, break it right down, do it faster, build the speed right up. And again, the cross, cross jab, cross. So. And back. And it's important to do those as well like that because you don't want to get stuck in the habit of lead, back, lead. Because then it will become confusing when you come to do back, lead, back. And it will create little roadblocks in the intentional trigger to, to do the posture. That's why we have to think very carefully about the things that we train into our, train into our body. We try to set something free that's more primal than that and recognise how easy it is to be trained like a dog, like a dog that can be trained, not looking at anyone in particular. And you just habitually do those movements. We want something freer, but we want to give it the tools to be free. So, okay. I don't, I don't need to do millions of demonstrations. I think it's pretty clear from that. And then we can start changing, thinking a little bit about, about doing some other stuff. So we've looked at quite a bit of stuff. Uh, it's the kind of thing you've probably seen. Let's, let's think of the easiest way to do it first. We're going to do jab and then step out into the, into the cross like that. And there's two, again, there's two ways of doing it. We can leave the back foot where it is or we can move it. So we'll leave it where it is for the moment. So one, two, creating a bigger movement. One, two. 
All this is is creating a bigger posture to get more movement, more volume on the posture, more power. This is what everyone's doing in each one who's actually training to fight, real fight training. Only magic power charlatans aren't doing this. And when you see this, when you understand this, then you understand about creating volume in movement. So one step out and using this step out to put power in there. All the kind of stuff that we've talked about before, but we're doing it very relaxed at the moment, remember. The quality changes when we increase the speed and power. So there are things that will happen when we well, get in the, the far lead round when we do it like that. It isn't there when we just do a step. It's just not there. So, But we train it step by step, building block by building block. Do three out of the way, so. I'll do this way so you can see this. Maybe hopefully see the footwork more for the front foot. Like that. Really relaxed, just really relaxed training just to build up, build up basic skills. Now I'll do it the other way, which is to one and then step step. One one, two, like that, very similar. Just a little bit more, you know. You forget, I forget how hard some things are really when, when you're starting out, like this just seem like nothing later on because you've escalated the basics so far beyond that. They've all got to be practiced and worked on, so. So this time when you hit, when you hit, the fist is really out of alignment with it. It's not along the line like that. It goes out like that. So you're right out of the way and you're hitting like that. And this is an, an interesting posture because it links into the stuff that I've talked about, about, about how structure functions, that alignment alignment helps to create solidity and power. And the more it goes out of alignment, the more you're relying on the way that the muscles and bones are uh, aligned, the way that the muscle groups work together efficiently, because this is very much a strength thing, the more that the arm moves out, the more you're relying on this muscle group to function, function efficiently. It begins to conceptualize this idea of making postures bigger to get more power. There's always a compromise, so it makes it bigger, makes it bigger, but you, every loss is always a gain, so you lose the structural integrity. You make it bigger, but you lose the structural integrity that was linked back down to the pushing back into the body. Now it relies more on this, this muscle group, so you lose some of the solidity of the, of the strike. So there's always a payoff with everything. So one, two, one, two. I haven't got enough room. These, these side steps are the best ones to practice first rather than obviously we need like stepping in punch. Those are a little bit more dangerous and they require a little bit more skill around how you use the wrist and the, the screwing force to step in. This is how we start building the skills that will lead into that so it's better to do it this way first and avoid injury. Using the side to side steps these are a lot easier. So we can do the same thing with the we can do cross we can do step out and we can do jab but it's quite an odd one two we start creating this kind of offline offline movement like that i'm not saying don't practice it could be valid one two but you can see you're really you're really off balance here like that but i mean everything you've got to be able to hit off balance that's you know goes without saying Quite an odd, odd little posture. So one, then we step out of the lead leg and then just change and skew the skew the way the pot the configuration is stacked, skew it right over like that. One, one, two, like that. 
and as well as, as well as the muscle somatic timing the bounce back you can use the push off the bag to help push you into a posture like this as well as long as you hit the target because if you go for it and you miss it can make you overextend the arm but you can use it to push you into the push you into the posture like that so yeah it's worth learning but it's an odd posture normally what we want to do is what we call rebalance the posture which usually involves using footwork to just get us back into our normal our normal stance so in this case one before we were going like that but if we just pull this foot back we can rebalance back into our, something pretty close to our normal posture one two three um you should learn this to ping back off the wall as well whatever it is you ping back off so one step and then as we step like that i've got quite enough room i'm gonna to have to adapt but it's what we, what we call a sliding set i've talked about have i talked about it yet i can't remember the order of the videos but it's what we call a sliding set that actually punch as the posture is setting back with the back foot like that and um, maybe it's easy to do this one one then step then step like and there's some different unusual things about a posture in the way that it's set so one step it's a sliding set at the point where it hits its back foot its back foot pivot root for a lead hand lead hand posture remember i flagged up probably in the first video or first couple of videos that there are exceptions to rules and there are times when we do where we do a a rear foot pivot it's not even a pivot route really it's not even so i call it a sliding set it's not just because it's on the ball the foot doesn't really mean it's a pivot route it isn't really one one it just slides like that into the and sets the posture like that onto the back foot back foot like that so it's a little bit more it's a little bit more advanced but we've lots of things like this so at this stage it should be absolutely fine to do something like this one step and then as we slide we throw the punch and it sets like that it's not quite in line so one two you see it's not in line it's not in line so much for this kinetic chain stuff and um, this is a very it's a very limited idea so much for that this isn't really a kinetic chain or anything like that it's the configuration of the the muscular interaction working as a system interconnected with the the bone alignment and then using Hun Yuan Li as the the neural link that knits this all together into a whole twisting interconnected coordinated system Some of those things are really hard to explain because they they are physical knowledge but they're not really difficult it's just one of those things when you feel it when someone feels it then you can talk about it until they feel it it's like it's, it's always in their imagination so there's always that that gap that explanatory gap that you can't bridge so yeah it's one two like that you're still using the rotational farley but look at the way that it's sat on the back foot like that almost like a pivot root like that and a kind of lean over so similar to the way we did it the first time but it's just a little bit safer because we've got our one no across one two we've got our body much more in alignment with it so we've rebalanced it as far as we possibly can whilst maintaining speed in the moment so that's going to look like The other way. Whoa! Oh, there's some problems doing it. That. That's because there's not enough room, so I'm foreshortening it. So if you're going to go for me, go for me in a phone box because I've obviously got a weakness going that way. So, like that. I'm having to foreshorten it because I haven't got enough room to quite pull it round into the. But these are the kind of adaptations that, that you want. So 
later on when you're training with a partner, do loads of stuff like get in the corner, get on the pads, you've got to change the way you the way you're doing all your movements because you haven't got any room for the big the big postures. Adaptation, being adaptive. What? Why are you skulking? Why are you being a skulker? Why are you being a skulkoid? What? So, I mean, we, we want to be learning faster now anyway. We want to be doing more things rather than just having one video that's looking at one thing. We'll never get anywhere. Be, I calculated we need like some like 5,000 videos just to cover every basic thing. So let, let's just change what, what we do now into a different... Let's go one and then just do this shuffle into the... The punch this way it's a good thing it's a good thing to do on the air and it's a good thing to do on the bag it really tests your ability to hold the structure and root it so we can do it you can do it from here and just change and practice like you see the feet go first and practice it like that at first but what you really want to get is the one two so that's the thing that really going to test the ability to be more dynamic with your footwork so and then reset and then reset and reset reset and everything else just practice exactly the same way doing like a standing posture and holding and then going through the posture and so on. all the things we've looked at before I don't want to keep rehearsing all of that because when I get more content in you can do all of that yourself self-directed learning so that's where to move on to next have a go at that if you've been following along you've reached the 95 percent point with the others this is what to move on to next and obviously you can apply the same thing to to the other punches I'll see how I want to approach that moving forward but for now for this one love that's it give it a go leave a message spread the word promote each one promote Wushu nourish everyone's development I'll see you in the next one